If I but just touch his clothes, I shall be healed. In our readings today, in the gospel today, we have two healings, two females, one adult woman suffering for 12 years, the other a girl of 12 years who died. Both Jesus refers to his daughters. The woman with the hemorrhages, she's unclean. According to Jewish law, she's ritually unclean. So anything she touches, anywhere she sits, becomes unclean. And if she touches another person, that person becomes unclean. And she comes up behind Jesus knowing this, and she touches his clothes. But instead of making him unclean, he makes her clean. He heals her. You know, I've often preached her about this woman as an image of the post-abortive woman. She could be seen as an image of the ancient people of God. Could she be an image of the suffering church in their present day, hemorrhaging by sin? In the first reading, it says, by the envy of the devil, death entered the world. And in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, in paragraph number 2538, St. John Chrysostom says, we fight one another and envy arms us against one another. If everyone strives to unsettle the body of Christ, where shall we end up? We are engaged in making, the, in making, Christ, making Christ's body a corpse. We think about our times, this image of the hemorrhaging woman and being an image of, possibly an image of the wounded church. In our time, Cardinal McCarrick and all the terrible things that he did and then being reinstated even after officials in the hierarchy knew about his, his unjust behavior, to put it mildly. We have confusion by clerics blessing that which can never be marriage or matrimony in Germany. We have ambiguity on ch church moral teaching from church hierarchy. We have Catholic pundits who rub salt into the wounds, who oftentimes uh, speak logical fallacies. They, they speak with sarcasm and personal agendas. We have firestorms on social media, lambasting even good bishops and good clerics in the church because they're not of whatever camp or tribe that the person lambasting the other is doing. We have political figures who self-identify as Catholics, supporting and furthering the causes to destroy human life at its most vulnerable stages. And we can just go on and on with what's going on in the church today. And what are we to do? What are we to do? Friends, we've been through this before, or things like this before, believe it or not, as church. Oh, obviously, before we were born, we've been really lucky. We've been really, I've been lucky in my lifetime, right, to have Pope John the 23rd, Pope, uh, Pope Paul the Sixth, Saint, both saints, Saint John, Saint, Saint, Pope Saint John Paul the Second, Benedict, been lucky to have all these really good popes during my lifetime. And many of you have experienced the same thing. What are we to do? We, but we've been through this before. And when I ask the Lord about these things going on, it's like, hey, the church has been through this before and it's still here. We've had scandals. We've had even documents from the church from Fourth Lateran, Fourth Lateran Council, which is a great council. It defined transubstantiation, but it also had decrees denouncing Jews and Greeks, saying Jews could not work in these certain areas, and Greeks, because they were associated with Constantinople and the fall of Constantinople, they denounced the Greeks. Believe it or not, it's true. We've had scandalous popes. We've had Alexander the Sixth, who poisoned he bribed his way to the papacy and he poisoned the cardinals that opposed him. And then, if that weren't enough, he would parade his mistress around the Vatican. Yeah, this has happened in the church. 
We've had popes preaching heresy, so if memory serves, Pope Honorius II uh, was known to be a heretic, and after he died, they dug him up, they exhumed him, and they put him in his papal vestments and seated him and asked him to recant, told him to recant, and he didn't, obviously. So they burned him and threw him in the Tiber. This is our church. We've been through this before. You know, you go to St. Peter's and it's beautiful, right? The, the uh, colonnade and, and all the buildings. Part of it was scandalous, uh, the building of this, because there were certain shifty clerics in the church who sold indulgences to pay for the building of St. Peter's Basilica. Friends, the teaching of the church is solid. It's solid. We have the Catechism of the Catholic Church it was beautiful. You know, as goofy as we think, see things going on in the church and some of these bishops that are being off the rails and so forth, it can only last so long because my time going through the seminary and a little bit before and then all the time after, the guys coming out of the seminary are solid. So sooner or later, these people that are off the rails are going to die out or they're going to retire. I think there's a bright future for the church. These guys are solid. They're on board with the church teaching. They're on board with church, the church morality and the teachings of Jesus Christ. So the teaching's solid. I heard a priest say recently, and he was somebody that was in formation with me a couple years behind me. I see him on YouTube a lot. I, I'm not a big fan. I think that he's very imprudent in many regards, but I will say this, he said, said this the other day, only Jesus can save us, and you're like, spot on, spot on, brother, only Jesus can save us. We need to reach out like that woman with the hemorrhage to touch him for healing as he reaches out to us, the bride, and says to us, Talitha kumi.